Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Samzel33 here, and welcome to Mix Up. And today we're going to be talking about a few things. First, we're going to be talking about the results of the first week of Battle Roads. I don't have the results for the second one, sorry about that. Second, we'll be talking about Luya Legend, because it actually won a Battle Road. And third, we'll be talking about my second Battle Road. A lot of confusing numbers, I know. But, anyway, without further ado, let's get to the main part of the show. Well, not the main part, but the first part of the show. First part of the main part of the show. Yep. That. So, first on our agenda today, we're going to take a look at the wins for Battle Roads. And the results are definitely very interesting. As you can see, the most wins with five is Darkrai Tornadus. It can counter basically every deck right now, and it's just a really great deck. Tornadus is great against those fighting decks, and Darkrai is just great against everything else that Tornadus isn't, like Eels or CMT or whatever. And next with three wins is a still pretty good deck, Zekiels, or Electric, whatever. It's still a pretty good deck, it's not the best deck in the format, I think Darkrai has kind of got that right now, but... Electric decks are definitely still a very good choice, they're very consistent, very powerful. They have a very large range of attackers, and they're just really great decks overall. Next, with three wins, is Darkrai and Smeargle. Just basically a Darkrai, Tornadus type decks without this Tornadus. <laughs> uh, pretty consistent, uh, only use one attacker, but that's probably why they have less wins they have fought. Probably had to fight too a few too many fighting decks in Swiss to get in the top cut. And next, another three wins is three Terrakian variants. Uh, there are definitely a lot of variants of Terrakian there. There is one of them was Landers Terrakian. There was a Groudon Terrakian, and there was just straight Terrakian. And as you know, Darkrai and the Electric are both weak against fighting types, so Terrakian and his friends are just amazing right now. And next, with one win is CMT. And yeah, this deck is kind of losing popularity because Darkrai destroys it since it can 2 hit KO all of its main attackers and also in the process kill Celebi so this deck is definitely dying fast and it won't be allowed and it won't be around after rotation anyway but it's time out of the spotlight is over and Darkrai is just taking that spotlight for himself so sorry CMT you might not be one of the best decks in the format right now but you're still a decent deck next we get on to some really weird decks there's Kling Clang, which is supposed to mimic the Japanese exclusive Darkrai and Hydreigon deck that uses a Darkrai from the Dragon sets to move Dark Energies around and use Max Potion to heal them. This one you just use Rainbow and Prism Energies to do the same job as that Hydreigon, but it's obviously not nearly as good. That deck is amazing. This deck's just pretty good. Still an interesting deck. Definitely has a lot of testing to be done with, and I'm sure it could become a lot much better deck and win some pretty high ranking tournaments but right now it's not the best deck because it just needs all time to grow and next with one win is Lugia Legend and Terrakian you might be thinking whoa whoa Lu a, a legend it won a battle roads when Darkrai eel decks and all this stuff is there there's a legend run around destroying everything well, yes, Lugia Legend is somehow becoming good again. It was, in fact, a little better once the EXs came out because it can one hit KO everything. But it's just really good against these EXs, as I said. It's really easy to accelerate, and it can even donk. And the person who won it actually wrote an article on Poke Gym, so you can just look up the article Lugia Legend Battle Roads or whatever, and you can find the article and see how the deck works. But I'm going to talk about how the deck arc works right now. So Lugia has some interesting stats. It has 130 HP, which is decent for a basic Pokemon. It's not really a basic, but it is close to a basic. It has a lighting weakness and a fighting resistance, kind of like Tornadus, a little bit. And one entry cost, again, just like Tornadus. So stats seem decent. And you might think, wait, 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 130 HP for a Legend? That's like an easy two prizes from a Lightning Pokemon. Well, you forget, Lugia Legend and Hoa Legend only take one prize because they're only one Pokemon, so Lugia Legend doesn't have that drawback, thankfully. It has uh, attack and a Poke Power, before they were abilities. Elemental Blast for Fire, Water, and Lightning. Does 200 damage and says discard Fire, Lightning, and Water energy. 
And yeah, you, I said it could donk early, I might be like, wait, no it can't. It needs three energies to attack. Well, there's a couple things it can use to do that. First, it's its poke power, Ocean Grow. It says, when you put Lugia into play, you can look the top five cards of your deck and put all the energy cards onto it and then attach and then discard the rest. Kind of like Electrode Prime, but obviously not as large a range of your deck. And obviously, another great card to pair with Lugia Legend is Legend Box. If you can get a decent Legend Box with the amount of energy you're running in this deck, you can probably get three energy onto Lugia Legend, retreat your Trakian or whatever the heck's in your active spot for Lugia Legend and then use and then use Elemental Blast to KO something if there's only one thing on the field. Now I'm not sure if this works or not, but you might actually be able to use Legend Box and then when you put Lugia into play with the Legend Box you can also use Ocean Grow because Lugia Legend's Ocean Grow it says when you put it into play it doesn't say when you play it from your hand. So if someone could tell me whether or not you could do that, I would love to know. If that's the case, then it could just be ridiculously easy to accelerate it. It's just like the 15 card range to get 3 energies, that's not that hard to get. So yeah, it's 200 damage, as you know that's able to knock out an EX. The only things that can survive that are Conkolder, which doesn't see play. And if Rezion EX ever comes out, if it has an EVL add on, but this will be rotated anyway. That will be able to survive it since it will have water resistance and will probably have 170 or 180 HP. But that is not going to matter, and it's never going to come to that situation. So yeah, the reason you pair Terrakian is kind of going with the Empoleon slash Terrakian route, where you know it's weak to lightning. Let's include a Terrakian to get rid of all those stupid lightning Pokemon in a story. Uh, there are definitely some other cards you could pair with Lugia Legend. First of all, there's Rayquaza and Deoxys Legend, which some people have been using because uh, it uses fire and lightning energy, the same type of energy that Lugia uses, as, and it's also legend, so it can be used with legend box as well. Uh, Shaman is one you definitely want to include, so you can get just the right amount of energies. So you use legend box for two Lugia legends, one has two waters and a lightning, and one has two fires and a lightning. You can use Shaman to make sure that they both have a fire, water, and a lightning so that they can both use Elemental Blast. Shaman, their deck really couldn't do without one or two of the card. So now let's look at the Battle Roads winning list itself. This is taken directly from that article I was talking about earlier. Basically the same exact list except some minor text changes that I made. But anyway, let's take a look at the list itself. Uh, it has three Terrakian. Of course, just a great card and, you know, going to be good against those lightning and dark Pokemon. Two Smeargle for your consistency. It's a good starter since your only starters are going to be Terrakian, Smeargle, and Shaman. You don't want to really start Shaman or Terrakian really, so Smeargle is one of the best starters. And Shaman for all the reasons I explained. 2-2 two -two Lugia Legend. Uh, max amount of donking and legend box getting power possible. And now onto the trainers. There's not too many supporters or supporting or supporter getting cards. There's four Juniper, three N, and two Ran Receiver. Usually decks have around nine to twelve supporters and two to three supporter getting cards, but this one only has seven supporters and two supporter getting cards, so supporters are kind of low. But I guess with Juniper and Legend Box thinning your deck out a little bit, you won't be needing too many supporters. I don't know how well it worked for the person who won the battle road, but I don't know. Just seems kind of low to me. Four Junk Arm, obvious, just to get back all those good cards. Four Legend Box for maximum amount of chance you'll get it on the first turn or second turn. Three Dual Ball to help get those cards you need super fast, pretty easily. Three Switch, just because you don't really want to be manually retreating and discarding all your energy, because this deck actually runs low on energy, because of all it's discarding. Three Super Scoop Up for the same reason, but conserves more energy. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why I there's so many of it, but I don't know, I'm not the one who won the Battle Roads. Three Super Rod, this one's really great because when your deck is getting really thin, there's only one or two, possibly zero cards, you use Super Rod, get back two Lugia Legend halves and some energy and use more Super Rods to get more energy, you can automatically get a Lugia Legend out with enough energy to attack. So Super Rod, definitely run that in high amounts. Two Catcher, a little low on the Catcher count, but they can KO over really anything, you're not going to have to get around anything unless you're using Terrakian to get around uh, Tornadus or something. 
2 EXP share, uh, just in case you're going to be in one of those matches where you're only going to be using Terrakian. Don't know what matches those would be, but there are definitely ones you'd want to only use Terrakian in. It's not too great when you're just using Lugia Legend because it obviously discards energy and there's not going to be energy. It's not going to be any energy you can use EXP share for. Now onto the energy, there's a lot of very odd things. There's 3 fire, 3 water, 3 lightning, 3 fighting, and 4 rainbow. Quite a lot of energy and quite a lot of odd combinations. Uh, you basically have to have 4 rainbow since there are such odd energy counts. Anyway, there's so many different types of energy you need. Rainbow energy is definitely needed at 4. You can't use prism energy because it doesn't work for Lugia Legend. So rainbow energy is definitely the choice you want to go with. So that's about it for the list. I've already talked about all the text and stuff you can use. So yeah, I just really love this idea of this deck. Can so obscure and not normal that I love it. You know, mix-ups all about being weird, making all these weird decks. So this is just awesome idea. Love it. And uh, I would try it out, but I don't have any Luki Legends to try it out with. So yeah, it also seems kind of complicated. And yeah, but anyway. Now that we're done with our second topic, let's move on to the final topic, which is my Battle Roads. The second Battle Roads I went to, which was in a place called Six Feet Under, where the Pennsylvania Regals actually took place. Uh, this Battle Road was way better than the last one, like a thousand times better. First of all, there were like 12 seniors. Second of all, the juniors, actually, there's only three of them, so it mixed in with the seniors, so there's 15. Not quite enough for five rounds and top four playoffs but you know can't ask for too much when you're in senior division doing battle roads this tournament I'm still using any electric deck I didn't quite get the cards I needed from my other deck but I do have them now so that's good the only change I made to the deck was I took out the sages and put an N in instead because really I don't like hitting sages off of the random receiver so because he doesn't refresh your hand it just gives you two cards which with random receiver, you usually want a full new hand. So anyway, when I get there, I have about an hour before the tournament starts. You know, those, I actually got there before registration even started. But anyway, I played a game with for fun for someone with a Darkrai Weavile Zoroark deck, and I lost. I made some pretty bad misplays. I put a Cleffa down when he was using Darkrai, which is just about the stupidest thing you could do. And I just wasn't pl paying attention. I got rid of a lot of my attackers at the beginning. So, yeah, kind of bad, but it did teach me two things. One, not to place down Cleffa against Darkrai, and two, to conserve your attackers. It would definitely help me later in the tournament, because I did come across two of those problems. So anyway, first round up against a beginner deck with, you know, just two types and a bunch of good fire and water Pokemon. He had Apollyon, Reshiram EX, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. This match is pretty sad. He starts Vanillite. I don't know why he runs Vanillite. I start Zekrom EX, attach Lightning, set up t some Tynamos, I pass. He plays Vanilla and he attacks. I draw, use Juniper, try to get the DCE, I get the DCE, and, and Glinton Cloth with Knockout. Yeah, pretty sad. Play another game for fun, and I just basically overwhelm him and destroy him. You know, he's using. He's not. He doesn't have the best deck, but, you know. I don't really blame people like that. I mean, it's hard to get all those expensive cards, even though he did have Reshiram EX and Regigigas EX in his deck. But, anyway, it was a really boring match, and gonna hurt my resistance in the end, because he's probably gonna go 0 and 4. So, round 2, I'm up against someone named Drew with a Eels deck with Rocco EX in it. This is definitely the most fun battle I had all day. I start Tornadus to his. I, I can't even remember. Dang, I think it was Smirkle. And I have Tynum on my hand. I am afraid of getting knocked out, so I don't place it. He goes first. He plays N and gets rid of it, so that kind of hurt my consistency a little bit. I didn't get out my eels for a while. He got out. I think he had three eels at one point. It might have been two. No, I think it was two. I did manage to KO both of his eels, so he was left pretty stranded. He couldn't get out anymore, but he was actually a pretty large margin ahead of me. I think it was like 4-2 to 3-2 prizes or something. And from there, just kind of, he's just kind of struggling to get any KOs by and I let his field. And eventually, he does pull through and win. But it was definitely a very close game. And if I probably played down that time at the beginning, I might have been able to win. But I'm not so sure about that. Kind of hard to really know for sure. 
but it's not just another lesson for the future, I guess, and I'm pretty sure he went on to go 4-0. I don't know if he won the tournament or not, but he did go 4-0, so yeah. So next match, I'm up against someone I can't remember the name of with a Zoroark, Darkrai, and Regigigas for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, this match goes pretty simple. Uh, he plays Zoroark to get rid of a little bit of my field. like attack him and get rid of his Zoroark, and he brings up Darkrai. He can't really build up too much energy on his Darkrai. I just take it out. And yeah, there's not much to say about this match. I just kind of steamroll him, get rid of all those attackers, and he can't really do much. Now I'm on 2 1. And now into the final match uh, against someone I can't remember the name of with a Zoroark Weavile deck, not the one I fought before the tournament started. And this match is just terrible. I start Shaman. Thankfully, I have a Skyro Bridge in my hand, but it doesn't really help me. I can't get anything. I get like five or six supporters, I can't get anything. I try to thunder wave. I, sadly, I have to thunder wave with my Tynamo to try to stall, and sadly, it gets tailed and he knocks me out. So I'm kind of stuck with the Shaman, and eventually I start getting attackers out, but it doesn't really help me. I'm too far behind. I can't take any prizes. He's already won. Might as well have just scooped after like the third turn. So anyway, I go 2 2, and I get like 7th or something. I'm surprised I got 7th. I thought I'd get a little bit higher, since a lot of the people I fought did pretty well. The two people I lost to, I think were at least in top four. I don't know about the guy with the Jorog Weavile deck, but the Electric one, that again, that was 4-0, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, definitely a much more fun event than last time, where I was just a bunch of boring games. Well, one fun game, one buy, and one boring game. I make a lot of good trades, and of course I get the final card I need for my deck that I've been working on. I make a lot of interesting trades, but anyway... Yeah, definitely a very fun event. I had a lot of fun, and I come home with a new binder and a new deck box because I felt like buying them. So yeah, that's my report of the Six Feet Under Battle Road. Much more fun than the Red Cap Corner one. Six Feet Under, yeah, as I said, that was where the Philadelphia, not the Pens, yeah, Pennsylvania Regionals was held. So it's going to be a pretty big place because of that. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Lugia Legend is definitely very interesting card and definitely what I really wanted to talk about but next week we'll be talking about a certain card from Dark Explorers it's not a ultra rare not EX it's not even a hollow what could it be and uh yeah next week Battle Roads it's coming it's done and it will destroy you